I look at the history of photography not so much as a you know history of a medium, but I look at it as kind of a, a graphic novel and kind of this fiction of a history, which I think the whole term history has become that anyway. This rendering of photographs that I used in the History of Photography remix flattens the surfaces. The effect that it had on the images is, I think, that they became in some way fictionalized. They are not pure evidence of an event. People don't even know if this is a made-up drawing, if they're not familiar with the source, or if it is uh, actual tracing of an original photograph. In this translation from photographic image to drawing, there's obviously a dramatic reduction of visual information, but what is gained is, I think, symbolic image content. And, and I think drawings have a higher symbolic image content than um, photographs do. Like, or drawing an object is almost like writing a text. Um, if you make a drawing of a mountain, it's almost like spelling the word mountain, M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N. The letters mountain uh, are a combination of graphic symbols that in our mind give meaning to this, you know, geographic structure. The same way that a drawing of a mountain kind of gives gives a symbolic image to this other image that exists in the three-dimensional world. And this power of symbols, graphic symbols, drawn symbols, is kind of what I'm interested in, in the type of animation and drawings that I make. And I find that symbolic image content is in no way inferior to photographic image content. Most children don't watch photographs until they are five years old. They just watch cartoons and, you know, drawings and picture books because they are a lot, in, in some ways, they can be read a lot more intuitively than photographic images. And that's kind of my motivation for using this process again and again.